Very good morning and welcome to members, friends, and visitors of Calvary Baptist Church. Isn't it great to be part of the family of God, especially on this nice sunny morning? We may not be able to give a hug or handshake right now, but our good wishes go out to the following people. Hani and CMK, Jerry H, David VB, Patty H, and John D, Blake H, who had birthdays last week. And congratulations also to Spurgeon and Barbara Jo D, who celebrated their 39th anniversary also last week. This week, Manuel T and Judy DP have birthdays. There's more information in church news in the March newsletter. Children can also find a Lenten themed kids coloring page there. So be sure to uh, check out your newsletter each month. Today is the third Sunday of Lent and communion Sunday. If you'll be sharing communion with us, you may want to be prepared by having your chosen elements of communion nearby later on. Pastor Cindy will present a special tenebrae service during Easter week on Maundy Thursday, April 1st. And just a reminder that daylight savings time will begin next Sunday, March 14th. So to be sure to set your clocks forward next Saturday night so we can see all your faces here on Sunday. If you would like to give to Calvary but do not have an envelope, you can always give online through our website. And now Mary will prepare our hearts for worship with a beautiful prelude. <laughs> me now the words of invocation let us pray all wise and all loving god 
We are drawn together in this place because all our knowledge and discernment is not enough to give meaning to our lives. All the pieces of our busy days need a center. And we have come to see that center in the foolishness of the cross. There, love went the distance for us. There, the paths of service were lifted up above our passion for personal gain. We are frightened by what you might ask of us, but we long for the wholeness only you can offer. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to, acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I hope that all of you got your Lenten bag because there's something special for today. Did everybody get one? I don't see any. Where's that Lenten bag? Anyway, today our scripture talks about the foolishness of the cross. So that's why I have a clown nose on. This is not my regular nose, in case you can't see. This is not my regular nose. This is a clown nose. But sometimes I like to wear it. You know, it's good to go to the drive up at McDonald's wearing a clown nose. It gives everyone a better day. The scripture today, I have to take it off so I can read. The scripture today says, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. The power of God sometimes makes us seem foolish to other people. You know, if we talk about how great Jesus is in our life and how wonderful it is to be a Christian, some people who don't know about Jesus go, oh, that's foolishness. But the Bible tells us that the foolishness of the world is the greatness of Christ. And so even if we can be a fool for Christ, we will have a knowledge that is greater than all of those around us because we have the love of Jesus right in our hearts. So will you pray with me? Oh Lord, we are thankful that we have the foolishness of Christ. That in the world, we may look one way, but we know that you are with us. You are walking with us. And even though it's sometimes hard to be a Christian, we know that you're always holding our hand and walking beside us. We thank you for that. And we thank you for all of these wonderful people who worship with us this morning and who know about the foolishness of Christ. Amen. Just great and 
for that great music, Karen. Takes me back to my junior choir days. We have a couple of prayer requests here, but if you have others, please raise your hand and we'll try to get them in for you this morning. We have a request for Karen McHugh's uncle Pete. He had a stroke and we wanna pray for Pete and for his wife, Norma. Sherry, um, Sherry asks her son, Rich has been ill. We wanna pray for Sherry. Sherry's feeling a little isolated these days. So we want to lift her up and remember her in our prayer. Are there other people who need our prayers this morning? I think of all the people. Yeah, Bob, can you unmute yourself or Scott can unmute you? I'd like to let people know that uh... Abraham Dennis is in the hospital this morning. Uh, on uh, Friday evening, he was not feeling well after I left him. And uh, not, I'm not quite sure what he went to the hospital for, but he was taken out in an ambulance. I spoke to him yesterday, but he sends his greetings to the kitchen ladies and to Miss Debbie and all the others who, who help him so much. So Abraham is a very good soul, and I, I'd ask prayer for him. Thank you, Rob. Other prayers this morning? I think of all the people who are waiting for their vaccines um, as we hear and listen to our friends who are getting their vaccines. We are prayerful and we are thankful that the vaccine exists now. But we are also mindful there are a number of people who continue to wait among uh, among them are my husband and I, who wait for our vaccine to um, be offered. But um, we want to remember that even though we have a vaccine, masks and social distancing are still important because we don't have enough people who are vaccined yet in order to achieve that herd immunity that we are looking for before we gather again. Let us come to our God with all our prayers this morning. Oh Lord, we are so thankful to be here. We are thankful for our friends and our family who gather with us for prayer and for praise. We thank you for those who have provided music for us this day and, and remind us of days gone by and people who sang those songs with us. We thank you for all of those who volunteer to participate in worship who lead us in song and prayer and scripture. We remember this day, Pete and his wife, Norma. We remember Sherry and her son, Rich. We remember all of those who are feeling isolated from the church. We remember Avery who went to the hospital. 
We remember all of our friends and family who are unable to get out and all of us who are not able to gather with friends and family in, on occasions. But we are also thankful for a vaccine that will eventually allow us to be together again. But remember, we pause to remember those who have died. So many deaths, so many friends who have been ill. We thank you, oh Lord, that some of them have been brought to healing and we pray for those who have not, for those who have passed on, for their family and friends who remember them. We thank you for the nurses and doctors who care for all of us when we are hospitalized or when we are ill. When we go to get our vaccine, we thank you for those people who will administer it to us. Oh Lord, we live in a world that is different than any at any other time. Our worship will never look like it has looked before. It doesn't now and it won't in the future, but the one central thing that is always present is you, our God, our Lord and our God. You are always there. You tell us that you will walk with us in all times and in all ways, and, and indeed you have, and you do, and you will. And so this day we are thankful for the foolishness of the cross, well, the foolishness that is our worship in Jesus Christ. We ask this prayer and the silent prayers of our hearts that your will would be done in all things. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 18 through 25 for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing but to us who are being saved it is the power of god for it is written i will destroy the wisdom of the wise the intelligence of the intelligent i will frustrate where is the wise person where is the teacher of the law where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since the wisdom of God, the world through which its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we pe preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles, but to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than the human strength. May God bless this reading of his holy word. Thank you, Alan. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. This week I was reading an article written on this scripture by the Reverend Brian Cowell, who is an Episcopal priest in Tennessee. He begins his article saying, for as long as people have followed the way of Jesus, there has been foolishness. Now, we have different ways and means to look at foolishness. Some people think of foolishness as just inane behavior, behavior that makes no sense to us. Some TV shows, I think, are foolish, but some other people don't think they're foolish. Sometimes we would be watching TV when our children would be growing up, and I would say, well, this is the most foolish TV show I've ever seen. Oh, mom, it's really, really good. We really like it. Don't change the channel. Okay, so we watch what I consider foolish TV. But the scripture tells us that the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to those who are being saved, 
it is the power of God. Isn't it interesting that when we think of the foolishness of the cross, it is those who are perishing who see it as foolish. This man, Brian, goes on to say, I heard a preacher in seminary telling us about the foolishness of the gospel. He reminded us of Judy Collins. Remember Judy Collins' song, Send in the Clowns? He reminded us of Judy Collins sending in the clowns and rodeos in Texas with clowns jumping out of barrels, entertaining children until it was time to distract the bulls from the cowboys who had fallen. Fools and clowns and eccentrics and Jesus all were telling us this was the way it had always been. So we understand that the message that points to Christ seems like silliness, but this is the way God works. God doesn't want us to use conventional wisdom to find him. And yet it is not, God is not saying to us, don't be smart, don't be intelligent, don't use your intelligence. The Message Bible says it this way. This is the way God works, and most powerfully, as it turns out, it is written, I will turn conventional wisdom on its head. I will so expose so-called experts as crackpots. There's a word you don't hear very often, crackpots. Where can you find someone truly wise, truly educated, truly intelligent? Hasn't God exposed it all as pretentious nonsense? You know the pretentious nonsense. Sometimes you get in a conversation with someone. You have no idea what they're saying. They use those 50 cent words or $10 words and it doesn't mean anything. And this is what the scripture today is talking about. The scripture today is saying, you need to be able to understand it. Understanding the scripture is what is important. If we are not careful and many before have not been careful, Brian goes on to say, it is tempting to turn this passage into a diatribe against learning to suggest that Paul is offering us a doctrine of no nothingism celebrating the mind that is closed and empty and narrow. But God did not create your head and your heart in order for them to wage a lifelong battle against each other. God's wisdom has never asked that a book be burned or an image be destroyed. God is not telling us that we do not, we should not seek after wisdom. The problem in his contemporary, and when Jesus was, was doing his preaching, the contemporary religion was that the intelligentsia were the ones who had all the answers. So it was those who used the big words and sat on the big chairs and stood in front of the crowd doing their thing, if you will, that they were the ones who had all the answers. So what Paul is saying is, no, 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 no. They do not have all the answers. That is foolishness before Christ. Christ wants us to have simplistic, not unintelligent, but not the intelligentsia that waves it about. Remember the scripture says, when you pray, go into a closet and close the door so that people won't see you. The scripture, Paul tells us in the scripture that we need to be wise in the ways of God, not wise in the ways of the world. Paul declares, if you desire to understand God's wisdom, do not be overly concerned with the eloquence of the speaker, but of what they say. Have you ever listened to a sermon that had lots of beautiful theological terms and, and make you, made you feel lifted up. But at the end of it, you couldn't say what it was about. You couldn't say what the preacher had said because you really didn't get it. 
And it wasn't because you were stupid. It was because the preacher wasn't preaching the Christian message. The message of Christ is foolishness to, to those who are perishing. But what St. Paul is reminding us is it's not the eloquence of the speaker. It's what the speaker is saying. Sometimes the most simple, easy lesson is the hardest lesson to hear and the best lesson for life. Paul says, do not be concerned with the eloquence of the speaker, but listen to what they say. Have they proclaimed Jesus and him crucified? In the life of the crucified Christ, all things are redefined. All wisdom is shown to be simple. All power is shown to be weak. All life that runs from death is shown to be fleeting. Remember that God sent Jesus to us, fully human, fully divine, so that he could show us the way. God's wisdom understands all language. God's wisdom is willing to be mocked. Do you remember Jesus being mocked even as he carried his cross on the way to Calvary? Jesus was willing to be mocked so that we might understand the wisdom of the cross. So sometimes you will be mocked. As I said in my children's story, sometimes it's not easy to be a Christian. And sometimes you do wear a clown nose. But you know what? It's okay. Because if you are preaching Christ crucified and the message of the cross, then that is what people will hear. People don't need to have long convoluted words and, and have someone racing across the pulpit. I remember I, um, there was a, a pastor who preceded David in one of our churches. And he, he preached walking. He walked over the whole chancel, back and forth, back and forth. Sometimes he'd go down the aisle and come back and he'd be walking, walking. He made me crazy watching him. I couldn't hear his message. I couldn't hear what he was saying. He was too busy acting. It was distracting to the word of God. The word of God just needs to be proclaimed simply. Simply and easily so that we can all understand it. I don't want to preach a word that only people with a college education or a master's degree in English can understand. God wants us to preach from our hearts. Because our hearts and our heads shouldn't be in competition with each other. We should be able to preach from our heart using words from our head, new, using our intelligence, but remembering that is the cross and Jesus crucified and resurrected that is the message. It's not our running around the pulpit or jumping up and down or waving our hands back and forth or our hand as it were if you only have one that works. We need to seek that foolishness. We need to seek that simplicity of that message of Christ. We preach Christ crucified and Christ living in our lives. Let us pray. Blessed are those who seek after God's foolishness, God's weakness, for there you shall find wisdom and redemption. There. You shall find yourself odd, but fully alive. Lord, have mercy on all of us this day. Amen.
close to me, save that thou art, thou my best thought, by day or by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence, my As we are in the midst of the Lenten season, this communion reminds us again of Jesus gathering with his disciples in the upper room. And even after that, we are told in the scripture that they knew him by the breaking of bread. And we know each other by the breaking of bread and the sharing of the cup and whatever elements you choose to use in your home that represent that bread and that cup. One of the things that we don't often do at, at Calvary Baptist, but we should and we will in the future, is to pray what we call the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus gave his disciples to pray. And so this morning, as we come to the table, I would invite you to pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to whatever table you are at this morning. Remember that it is the table, not of our church, but the table of our Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come, because it is Christ the Lord who invites you. It is his will 
that those who want him should meet him here. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he gave thanks. Let us give thanks. Oh Lord, we are thankful for this bread representing the body of Christ given for us. May it strengthen our, our souls and our bodies this day. Amen. As I minister to you in his name, I invite you to share the bread. And on, and on that same night, we hear, we understand that he took a cup and he blessed that cup. Let us pray. Oh Lord, this cup represents the blood that was shed for the remission of our sins. How can we be more thankful that a life was given for us that we might not have sin on our soul? Make us mindful of the sacrifice. Make us thankful for the life and make us good witnesses to Jesus Christ. Amen. Ministering to you in his name, I invite you to share your cup. As we come to the end of our service, I invite you to hear with me these words of benediction. You have been embraced by God's power and love. Dare to face the world, bearing God's wisdom. Be careful in your use of God's name. Live in awe that God has chosen you as a witness. The scripture will guide us toward God's truth. God's steadfast love will sustain us. We will seek to keep the spirit of the commandments, self-giving love toward God and humanity will guide us. Amen and amen.